Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. As you can see, I'm standing in the back of the garden again. So for those of you who watched my last video, I was working on this area basically, cutting down two of the hazel shrubs here a lot, just clearing out the area, harvesting the last of the pumpkins that were growing up here in one vine. And what I wanna to do today is basically work on a little project that is making a basket weave fence. So this is what I've already announced in my previous video. So for swing around and, oh, I'm good today actually. There is already a little section where I've done a basket weave fence last year. And it works as a brilliant support and I just think it fits really well into the style of garden, it just speaks country to me, it sits really well in the landscape and everything. And on top of it, I could use all of these beautiful hazel cuttings that I had. So what I wanna do in a second, just flip the phone and just walk you through the process on how I'm doing it and explain you how it works best. So I hope that you have fun with today's video. So I've made it myself comfortable as usual, because I really love comfy projects apparently. And I've already started a little bit, as you can tell, just to show you basically how it works and explain the entire progress a little better. So what I've done basically, I made sure that I put in the vertical beams first. And for those, I use the hazel canes that are just thicker and a little more substantial. So when you want to put in the verticals, make sure that you don't put them into the ground how they are growing on the shrub. So as you might see, it gets thick here and then slimmer to the top basically. So this is the um, way on how it grows on the shrub. And if I would put it in the soil like this, especially on hazels, even worse like on dogwoods or willows for sure, what's well, gonna happen, they will take root root in and you're gonna have like a bunch of new shrubs here. So if you wanna propagate your hazel, actually this is a quite good and easy way on how making more of your shrubs, but here I definitely don't want that they root in. So what I do is I just flip it upside down so that the side that actually would have been the top on the shrub is now facing downwards and then it can go into the ground. Um, quite important to say is, make sure that your spacing is right. So in terms of spacing, I just made like a little stick here that I always put in between each and every one of them so that the spacing is more or minor the same. I mean, the beams are not completely straight. So of course, at one point it will be a little wonky, but just like to have a general um, measurement in between it, that is definitely important. Then one more comment about like these ones is that the both on the on the ends basically you should use those stakes that are the biggest and most substantial because there will be quite a lot of pressure on them so don't use any flimsy ones that might snap or break on the outer corners in general try and make sure that they are sturdy enough because they really need to hold the entire weight of what I'm going to do now with a basket weave in here so what I do now is basically just take the last one and put it in and then I can already explain you what kind of tools I'm using for the project. So the first one is this like rubber hammer. I just like to work with that because I think it's quite easy and convenient. I also use it like to put in stones for a stone etching on my flower bed. But I figured that this is kind of like a good tool for pretty much everything that I do. So just hammer it in, trying to stay in the frame. All right. And try and make sure that they are kind of the same height. I mean, in the end, when you weave everything in, you can just always come in with your loppers basically and make sure that you just like snip off the tops. So it's kind of like even more um, uniform look basically going on. And then the last tool that I need, of course, are a pair of secateurs. Because when you weave in your canes, what's gonna happen, some, some of them are longer, some are shorter. So you want to make sure that you kind of like clean it off and make it look a little more even. So what I'm gonna do now is I have all of my cuttings basically here waiting for me. I don't think that I have enough, to be honest. I think I'm in a uh, moment, I might need to go down to the slope again and cut a little more, but this is how they're looking like. And I tried to get the longest that I could possibly find here on the hazels. And now looking at it, they're even not long enough, most likely, but how I'm gonna do it. And this is, um, there are different techniques. You could always just like twine one in and then the other one in the different direction and then again how you start it. But I like when you always work in bundles of three basically, because when you do that, it starts to look a little um, less busy in a way. So at the end of this video, I can show you both different because this one here, I basically used, um, with a, not the easy technique, but with the technique of always like going one way and then the other way. And then this one, I will just do with a different technique, which I've already done there. And I think it looks a lot better, to be honest. So how I start is at the bottom, 
This is the area where I always use those canes that are not necessarily the nicest looking because what happens is you might put mulch in it, you might put some plants in front of it. So there you don't need to like use your prettiest and nicest canes. So you always make sure when you're kind of like at this level here, this is where you start using your nicer ones because this is what you normally got to see. So always make sure that the top layer looks the best. And when I say I work in bundles of three, what I do is basically, here you can tell this is the way I was growing on the shrub. So there is a thick end, there's a slim end. And all I do basically is like, I just bend it a little bit and then just put it in like that. So the thick end goes to that side and then you just weave it in, always like around one another. It's always the same progress. In a moment, I will just take the phone, speed it up and put it a little closer here because then I think you got to see maybe better how I'm doing it. So what I did now is like the first one, came um, from that side with a thick end. So now I'm going to use this one here with a th thick end on the other side. And I'll just roughly try and measure that it kind of fits. And now I just basically continue with what I've done here. So they're crossing a little bit and then it just goes in like that. And I can already tell now by doing that, that the spacing of the uh, vertical beams is quite well, because I think it it, it, uh, they hold it pretty good, which is important. They're not like flexible, but it's also like they don't um, make sure when the spacing is too narrow, what happens sometimes is that the horizontal ones might snap and break. So a good spacing is definitely key for that. So the next thing what I'm gonna do is, now I'm gonna flip it other way around. And here you can tell this is not a very good looking one because it's kind of like twist and bend and everything. But here for the bottom, that's totally fine. Uh, so now I use a thin end on the side where I started with a thick end before and I just weave it in the exact same way how I did the first one. So make sure it's nice on top of it. And there it goes. Oh, perfect length actually. That worked out just fine. And the other one as well. So what I do is now that the uh, skinny end, however you call it, like the tip basically, goes in on that side here. So now just weave it in and there you go. So this is basically now, I've done two bun like two already and now it's the third one where I'm gonna just like repeat what I've done in the first place. So the thick end goes on this side here and then I just weave it in. And there you heard maybe a sound that it snapped already because some of the branches are more flexible than others are, which is totally fine and normal. Um, hazels, in my experience, are really good for this project though. So if you want to do something like this, willow branches obviously are perfect, but hazel works just as fine. And sometimes I think hazel looks in the end a little nicer because it ages really nice. Well, willow sometimes is so full of moisture and um, over the years when it dries down, the willow might have like some gaps in between while the hazel doesn't dry down that much in a way and it feels a little more compact. So what happens now is like I put in three bundles basically. So like three on this side, three on that side, they kind of meet somewhere in the middle here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna work my way from the opposite. And uh, it's basically exactly the same process. So what you did is like, here, the ends are facing my direction. So now for the next three bundles, I start on the opposite side of this of the beam here. So the beam's not really a beam, not that stick, whatever. And, oh, this is a thick one. This is going to be a little more challenging. It doesn't snap. Yeah, that, ooh, that looks good. It's always good to have some bigger ones in there as well, because then it pushes everything down and it makes sure that they sit really nice and evenly. That is definitely something that I like to see. And the exact same thing on this side here. So just the thick, uh, thick end on that side and then opposite to what I've done basically here. So always make sure that you're working opposite of what you've done with your three bundles before. And it is actually a very easy and quite nice thing to do, honestly. It's so, I find it very relaxing to do because it is, it's almost repetitive in a way, but in a nice way. It doesn't feel like, oh, I need to do this again. It's very accomplishing when you see, oh, it starts to look good. And um, the, the, the higher the fence gets, basically, the more you get to see the impact and how it's going to look. Always make sure as well, like firm it down a little bit here. And what I can do already is like this stick here, for example, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's like, 
I can't, or can I? Maybe I still can actually. Okay, that still comes to the front. But if it wouldn't, if it would just end somewhere weirdly in the middle here. So what I would do is just like snap it then off pretty much somewhere behind the last uh, vertical one, just to give it a little cleaner look basically. And that's basically all there is. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just change the camera and face it on me. And then you get to see basically a little more up close on how I'm doing it. Hope it's going to be interesting and I hope it's clear enough for you. <laughs> as I came with today's project. Unfortunately, I ran out of canes, but I still have more hazel shrubs, but they are growing behind a hedge. And I don't want to get in there now because we still have ticks at the moment. And I think I might just get in there probably at one point in November. But I think you get the point, basically. This is the look that I want to have. And what I really like now is that rather than this area kind of feeling like a little neglected and random, it starts getting a purpose in a way because by having fences on both sides, it really creates this like pathway and you're suddenly, your eye is drawn somewhere, you go somewhere, you really just know where to walk and this is exactly what I like and what I wanted to have. So what I want to show you now quickly, of course I want to show you Alfie, but I also want to show you the two different techniques. So this is the technique that I did last year. And this is not done by hazel cuttings. This is done by plum. So the look, of course, is completely different. And you can tell that it's like a little more uneven because I always went one direction and then the next came to the other direction. But it's definitely doing its purpose. I mean, it is a great support for the aster and the aster doesn't like fall down. It's not lying on the ground as usual. And I think it is definitely beautiful. But if I just swing around, there you get to see me. Hello. Uh, here you get to see the technique that I was using today. So I think you really see the difference. It's just more clean and crisp looking, just more neat in a way. And I like this better. So I think for any kind of future wicker fence that I'm gonna do, I'm really gonna use this technique. So one last thing that I actually did was I still had some boxwood cuttings that have rooted in extremely well. So here they are, still looking very small, but I put them all the way along that new fence here. So they should root in very well. And in a year from now, they should actually look just like these are looking here, because they are now in the ground for one year and they've put a lot of good fresh growth this year. And I want to have like a tiny little hedge of boxwoods flanking the fence. And that's also why I want to make sure that the fence is just uh, taller basically and then put the pink asters behind the fence so if I just go around you could just get to see and um, the look that I'm trying to achieve basically so that it's mirrored that I have like the pink asters on both sides of this uh, walkway and one last word about the walkway it is landscape fabric at the moment and simply because uh, it was just the easiest thing to do to suppress any weeds and it works really well. It's only like on the on these pathways here. I don't normally use landscape fabric, but I thought it's not looking nice, of course. So what I'm gonna do with that, and I had the idea of maybe putting more mulch on top of it, but I think this is not gonna work because it's sloping down and all the mulch with wind and everything and the topography, of course, is just gonna roll down at one point. So I had the idea of maybe using some used wood from pallets, like some planks or something, stained in black, and maybe put them all the way along here, because then this really feels like a little cute pathway and it, it, it makes this entire area feel just more 
I entertained and loved in a way. So let's see. I think more is going to happen in this area very soon. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and had fun with today's video. And maybe I could even encourage you on trying it out for yourself. Just make your own little basket weave fence in your own garden. You could basically use whatever cutting you have from your shrubs or fruit trees even. Just make sure that the canes are really nice and straight and flexible. And if they're not super flexible or if you cut them and they were already uh, on the ground maybe for a month or two and you feel they're not flexible anymore, just put them maybe somewhere in some water so they can maybe still soak up the moisture and then they will be flexible again. I've tried it before and it works fairly well. So all I can say now is hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.